And in the aftermath of the storm, finding food can be difficult, next to impossible. One organization's mission, though, is to make sure those affected in Puerto Rico and around the globe never have to worry about where their next meal will come from. Joining us now, the founder of World Central Kitchen, Chef Jose Andres. And um, it's amazing what you did with Ukraine, what you're doing there. Tell us what your plans are for Puerto Rico and beyond. Uh, well, uh, we do what we always do. We try to be ahead now of hurricanes in this case. So we had teams already in place in Dominican Republic, in Puerto Rico. We had teams already uh, going uh, to Bermuda. We have teams that they are used trying to get the uh, green light to land in Turks and Caicos. You see, big problems have very simple solutions. People always ask me, where is the food coming from? People, mm -hmm. is always food somewhere. Find the cooks, find the kitchens, find the volunteers, and then the most important, find the people that need you. Go to find them and make sure that every day you increase. Uh, the first day we did 5,000 meals, yesterday we did uh, 10,000. This is only Puerto Rico. Today I know my teams are going to be reaching 20 or 30,000 meals. By the weekend, if we need to be in the 100,000, 150,000, whatever it takes, we will do that. You see, big mm. problems, I repeat, have simple solutions. What we do is use to start cooking and start feeding. So, Chef Andres, wow. it's not just Puerto Rico. We were talking earlier. You bring water to Mississippi. 80 days, more than 80 days on, on the Ukraine-Poland border and within Ukraine itself. You've been to Buka in Ukraine. 24-hour-a-day uh, operation. You've been to Afghanistan, Pakistan, Alaska, all of these places around the world. I have a simple question for you about your simple solutions. How do you do this? Who funds you? How does it get done? Well, when you say me is the organization, me, I've been in few of those. Uh, but at the end, we are a small organization. We, we have, I think, 80 people on payroll. What we are very good is like, like an accordion. When we need to grow, like in Ukraine, Inside Ukraine, two people of World Central Kitchen went in. Before days, before weeks, we got more than 5,000 Ukrainians that joined forces with us. We showed them how we do it. Who financed us? The American people. Even now we have donors from around the world. We get financed dollar by dollar. Why? Because people see what we do in real time. We don't tell them, this is what we will do a month from now. The urgency of now when it's about food and water is yesterday. What we do, as always, we don't go to do assessment. We go to start feeding from the first moment we put the woods on the ground. Delivering food and water is one thing. But in Ukraine, you dealt with a daily danger. How did you deal with the daily danger of Ukraine while trying to keep local restaurants open and things like that? Did you lose anybody? Well, unfortunately, we lost uh, two people south of Kharkiv in Chuhiv. They were sleeping in a community center. What President Putin is doing is not use a war. He's doing a war against humanity. Maybe he's killing people, that they are only trying to live their daily lives. That organizations like us, we got kitchens destroyed and trains destroyed and cars destroyed. It's only telling you that obviously they are fighting a war against people. One thing is very clear. Ukraine feeds 500 million people in the world. Ukraine has food to feed themselves. Then you will say, why was Central Kitchen was there? Because that country was at war. 14 million people were just moving away inside Ukraine or living in Ukraine. We were there helping with the logistics. Where the supermarkets were shut down, we cover kind of the lack of supermarkets. When people were in, in shelters, we brought food to them inside the bunkers. So what we did was used to cover in the moment of chaos trying to bring some light by simplifying the problem, making sure that every Ukrainian that needed food will get it. But again, um, the, 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 the thinking that Ukraine needs food, the thinking like we need to be shipping food into Ukraine, no. Almost every dollar that World Central Kitchen has spent, in part thanks to the American people, we make sure that we put it inside the Ukrainian economy in the process of solving the problem, fighting, uh, feeding the people in need. We were able to keep restaurants open, factories open, and giving hope to people. That's what we've been doing in Ukraine. That's what we try to do everywhere we go. World Central Kitchen is relatively small to have such a huge impact and to be active in so many places around the world. And you know, with minimal bureaucracy, like you were talking about, hunger, thirst, it's immediate. You have to get in and address the need. How has your organization managed to be so effective 
in contrast, frankly, to a lot of the leaders who are here in New York right now talking about what they're going to do to end hunger, but not actually doing anything, just making pledges behind podiums. The pledges is something that keeps happening. Every year we come and we see pledge after pledge after pledge. Number one, are the governments really fulfilling those pledges? Very often we find out that not. And once the money reaches the different organizations that have to take care of the problem, are we really helping the people that need the aid? One of the things no world leader has approached here is every government says we're going to be donating money to fight the hunger. But very often, it's not money. It's food from the rich countries that is dumped into the poor countries. Of sure, they are not self-sustained because we're breaking their entire rural uh, way of life. They don't have a rural economy. Why? Because the rich countries keep dumping the food for free. Then we are worried that we have North Africans crossing into Europe. We are worried that Latin Americans are trying to come to uh, the United States. Why do you think is that? Because they're hungry, because their economies are broken. The world leaders, they need to stop coming with a wall feeding plan. We know President Biden is about to give a speech in the UN. I know global food security is going to be very important. This is very good first step. But I'm telling you, we need new recipes to feed a hungry world. The worst is coming, and I'm an optimist. The worst is coming. We're going to have floods, droughts, pests. Political instabilities, war, all at the same time. The food that you and I were taking for granted, one day is not going to be there. Food is a national security issue. Every president, starting by President Joe Biden, must have a food advisor and seen as a national security issue. The same way the defense, the same way as energy. The most important energy in the world is not gas, my friends, it's food. Mm. Food is what moves humanity forward. Let's make sure that food stops being the problem and becomes finally the solution. Cannot be that we cannot feed Africa because two ports taken by the Russians, controlled by the Russians because they, they couldn't ship at the beginning. We're gonna have entire continent hungry on the next month because US Russia decided just to stop two ports in Ukraine. This cannot be. We need to make also every country self-sustainable. That means mm -hmm. that if we don't diversify our food sources, we are going to be in next years in a very hard awakening. We need to make sure that food sources are totally diversified and that the people that feed the world can feed themselves. Those are the big problems that the world leaders should be addressing. And between you and me, I don't think they're addressing them. They keep repeating the same speeches, the same promises, and we are not getting new recipes. Chef Jose Andres, we are grateful for you. Thank you very much for being on the show this morning. We really appreciate it. And